Hi there, welcome to Venture Out There. I'm Mike and I'm out here on a sunny Colorado day and I point out the sun because today I'm gonna to be installing two solar panels up on top of this camper here to try to take advantage of that sun. This is a Northern Light 811 camper. It's for a six and a half foot bed. I'm gonna show you up on the roof in a minute, but uh, there's not a lot of extra space up there. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, big as campers go, but compared to many RVs, it's pretty small. And so there's a lot of stuff up there taking up space. There's an air conditioner, vents. There's one existing solar panel. There's a roof rack. Uh, I could go on, but uh, I've managed to take a few measurements and I think I can eke out enough space for these two 210 watt solar panels from New Power. And yeah, that's a weird name to say, but that's what it's called. And uh, they are a fairly long and narrow panel, which will allow me, I hope, to mount them on each side as part of the cab over. Uh, so I have some challenges up there that I'm gonna show you in just a second and talk about how I think I'm gonna go about mounting these. Uh, a little bit of an experiment like everything I do, but uh, fingers crossed, we're gonna get these up there. They're gonna be secure and they're gonna be awesome to have as we start traveling this summer. So here's the roof of the camper and you can see there's just not a lot of space up here. There is an existing 90 watt solar panel. I have the vent for the, the uh, propane refrigerator, a couple of vents, air conditioner, these roof racks, plumbing vent. I've got this uh, combo TV and cellular antenna up on top. That cranks down to fold flat here when it's not in use, taking up space. So right now, really the only space available is up here over the cab over. So the panels I bought are perfectly sized almost to fit up here, running fore and aft on the cab over. There's quite a bit of area up here, but it is fairly long and narrow. And I also have the challenge of dealing with this sort of step up here that's in the middle of the, the cab over. So the solar panels are fairly standard uh, in design with the aluminum frame. I really couldn't find a, a ready-made mount that would suit my situation up here. So what I'm intending to do is to use this Unistrut. This is an aluminum unistrut, which is a little bit unique. Steel unistrut. All right, plane. Shh. Well, let's try this again. Unfortunately, there's a very busy airport nearby. But uh, as I was saying, so I'm gonna use this aluminum unistrut here, basically to make a bracket that'll go two in the front and then two in the back in a similar fashion. In the front, this uh, unis front is just the right height for me to clear this step. So the bracket, the uh, panel will hang over the edge here, but this unis front will be underneath, back underneath the edge of it. And I'll be making a bracket, or I've made some brackets that I'll use out at the ends to attach to the end of the solar panel. Again, put one out here in the corner, one out here in the opposite corner. The solar panel will still hang out here a little bit. I'll do a similar thing back here, but because this, uh, this uh, roof changes angle here and the solar panel sticks beyond that point, I'm going to be sticking this out a little bit so there'll be a little bit of overhang here. And I'll be doing the same thing over here. Now this vent is in the way, but as you can see, the way this roof is designed, the, the raised area in the back up here is taller than it was in the front. So the solar panel is gonna sit up higher, the bracket will sit the same, or rather the unistrut will sit the same, but the bracket that I put on here will just extend up a little taller so it can attach to the panel and, and hold it up higher in the back. So I'll be doing the same thing over here with this vent. I'm gonna take the vent cover off. Uh, the solar panel is actually gonna cover up the, the vent. So don't need the cover, and the cover would just uh, interfere with the panel. This won't quite come all the way out to the edge as it will in the front. Uh, so it'll be similar to the, what's going on over here on, on the inside. 
The opposite side of the camper will be just a mirror image, except there is no vent. So this uh, unistrut piece will come all the way out to the edge over there. Now I'm going to attach this unistrut with VHB tape. And one of the nice things about this aluminum piece of unistrut here is it's solid on the bottom. There are no slots. So if you go by standard steel unistrut, which is very heavy, it will almost typically come slotted in the bottom. And I don't really need the slots. Those are great if you're gonna anchor it to a wall, but with the VHB tape, I've got it sized. It'll be just the right width to be inside this curved area. And it'll give a very large surface area for adhesion. And all of this will be adhered. And I don't have to worry about moisture getting down in that, in that uh, the slots on top here. When it's all done and after the uh, VHB tape has had a chance to cure, I will be going around with some caulking around the edge just to seal moisture out from underneath it. So you can see this solar panel up here really certainly maximizes this area. And if it was any bigger, it wouldn't fit. It's almost a perfect fit, in fact. But let me show you how I've got the uh, mounts laid out. So you can see underneath here is the unistrut. A little hard to see, but right now everything is just sitting in place. And I have some brackets made out of two inch aluminum angle, and they are bolted down to the unistrut with some stainless steel hardware and stainless steel unistrut nuts underneath. And basically coming all the way up to the edge of the, the cab. And the idea here is I don't want to get some shade or I want to minimize shading. So I do have this uh, silly roof rack here in the back and I uh, want to try to stay away from that a bit, but I also don't want to go too far forward to the edge here. So I've had to strike a pretty good compromise. But the idea here is I'll be marking this location, cleaning this up and then adhering the unistrut down with uh, VHB tape. So on the front, I've lined up the uh, aluminum angle flush with the front of the unistrut. Back here, I've given myself about a half inch extra, just a little bit of play. This is also not visible, so shouldn't jump out at you. So you can probably see, I mentioned there'd be a little bit of overhang of that unistrut past the high point of this roof. Uh, it's maybe somewhere between two and three inches. So still a lot of material adhered down for the VHB tape to uh, make contact with. Once I get the Unistrut all adhered down with the uh, VHB tape, the next step will be to come in here to, to uh, adjust the height of the panel on the brackets and to drill a hole in the bracket on the vertical section and then mark and drill another hole in the solar panel edge and then put in a rivnut and screw the uh, bracket to the panel with the rivnut. Last thing, once I get the height set, I'll mark the tops of these brackets and any brackets that might need to be trimmed down, I'll take off, trim down and clean up. Up on the roof, I marked the locations where these uh, mounts will be. And I had uh, cleaned up there, first cleaned all the dirt off, then went and scuffed the area with a uh, 3M type scuffing pad, wiped the area down really well with some isopropyl alcohol and uh, let that dry to get everything grease free and a nice clean finish with no oxidation. Also did the same with the, uh, the mounts here, which is the base of the mount. And you can see I put some of the VHB tape in place on the first mount. I'll continue with that until all four of these mounts are in place with the VHB tape. So welcome to day two of the uh, solar panel install here at the camper. Yesterday, I've got the mounts in place. The panels are up on the roof. They're not fastened to the mount. So today's task is going to be uh, sealing around the base of the mounts with some sealant now that the VHB tape has had a chance to do some curing. And then I'm going to uh, put the solar panels in place, going to level them up as how I want them angled and clamp them into place, drill the holes to install the, or install the rib nuts to connect the mounts to the panels themselves. And finally, I'm going to run the wires, hook it up and see what it does. Unfortunately, you might be able to see up here today is not so sunny in Colorado. Yesterday I got sunburned actually. And today I'm wearing a jacket to try to stay warm enough. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to get as much sun 
power today to test things out, but uh, we'll, we'll just kind of see where we end up and uh, get this project wrapped up. So just a quick look at where I left off yesterday. As I mentioned, the mounts are in place. So you can see the uh, aluminum unistrut is now uh, adhered to the top of the camper. The fabricated brackets are in place. I need to now basically set up the height of these. For the most part, I'm gonna keep them as low as possible in the front. I have to raise it up a little bit in the back because the center part of the, the camper roof gets a little bit higher in the back. I'll clamp them, make marks, drill everything out, install the rivnuts, so then I can put some, some screws in here to hold them into place. I also need to put a little uh, sealant around the base of each of the mounts just to keep moisture out from in there. And uh, eventually I'll get some, some caps here. I'm, I'm debating between either just putting caps on here or possibly putting a, an entire, almost like a little fairing piece across the front just to clean up that look. Hey, checking in again. I uh, just want to give you a, a look at what this looks like here with the bracket at the front of the solar panels and how I'm attaching them to the Unistrut. So you can see the Unistrut here and here is the aluminum bracket I made. Now the front, the front brackets are a little tall. They stick up above the, the solar panel. So I'm having to take them off and just trim them a little bit, file them, the rough edges down. But the gist of it is you saw earlier how the Unistrut and bracket are connected. The, the panel itself, what I've done is drilled a hole in the front of the panel and get everything lined up how I, how I think I want it to sit here and uh, mark everything out and then drill a hole in the bracket and in the panel itself and then you use a, a product called a rivnet so you can push this into the hole and so it's spread apart initially you put this nut rivet rivnet on the front it threads on you push that into the hole and then you squeeze these levers together to expand the nut and you have to do that a couple of times so once you've done it the first time you just widen them back up screw the mandrel in a little bit more and squeeze it until it, it uh, becomes difficult to squeeze and what you're left with is a nice nut that is uh, threaded in here to accept a, a machine screw from this bracket and hold it on top of the truck. And it is a very secure method of bolting these panels down. Milestone achieved. Both panels are mounted in place. Everything's bolted up, tightened up, and ready to go. I'm really impressed with how well the uh, VHB tape has held the Unistrut to the roof. I think with uh, all the surface area underneath a 12 inch section of Unistrut there, especially no slots. So you've got nice continuous adhesion. It uh, is rock solid. I can shake these panels and the whole camper shakes, but I don't see just the slightest bit of movement in this Unistrut on the roof. The next task is the wiring. So I have the two pigtails here. I'll join those together in parallel. They will be run underneath the existing panel and the wires will go in the vent that's over the refrigerator. Uh, it, it's the propane refrigerator and there's airflow in there. And uh, those wires drop right down in, go through a wall and to the solar charger. Hey everybody, it's a bit of a time warp here. Somehow I managed to uh, misplace the video I shot showing what was up on the roof, but it's been a couple of months now and I'm going to reshoot that, but also take this opportunity to talk a little bit about how this system has performed for us. We've been out on a couple of trips, including two weeks down to Arizona, and I'll uh, go over that after I give you a little tour up on the roof of how things turned out. Here we are. You can see that the wire wires have been all connected and routed. I have... Uh, secured them down with the turnabon tape. And what I have here is uh, they're in parallel, so I have a little Y connection and then to some extension wires that run under the existing old panel and down through the refrigerator vent and into the wall over to where the solar panel is located. So I mentioned it's been a couple of months since I put these up here and we've had a couple of trips. And I wanna talk first about how this attachment is down here. There have been no problems whatsoever with the uh, VHB tape, and it has been super strong. If I get up here now and try to shake it, I will uh, be flexing the roof. The panels are on there rock solid. 
we have been through some trips where we've had very high winds, about as high as I feel comfortable driving the truck in, with uh, high wind advisories uh, heading down the freeway at 60, 70 miles an hour, and no loosening, no rattling, nothing here. It has stayed rock solid. So I feel very good about how this attachment came out. I think it's gonna be at least as strong as trying to put screws into the, the fiberglass without knowing what's behind it, and probably much stronger. So let's talk about performance for a second. I've got the panels all running through the original 30 amp max charging capacity pulse width modulated solar charge controller. And it has been more than adequate for the 240 amp hours of flooded lead acid batteries we have. As I mentioned, this is the first stage of a electrical system upgrade. And we've just been using this for our our vacation weekend type trips and have had more than enough capacity for what we use in a given night. Even if we run the heater all night with the fan going, we can still get, even on a cloudy day, enough charge to, to boost this back up again. So right now the, the batteries are fully charged, so even on a nice sunny day like we have today, it's kind of mid-afternoon. The panels aren't perfectly oriented towards the south, but we're getting you know no charge because the batteries are fully, fully topped up. But let's turn on the DC on the refrigerator, which is a big power suck and kind of see what capacity these panels will pull out. I should really max this out for whatever sun is available, and then it probably won't supply enough current for the refrigerator, but the rest would come out of the batteries, and this will give it be a good test of what our capacity is. Okay, I've kicked the uh, refrigerator on and put it into DC mode. So let's first take a look at what the charge con solar charge controller is putting out. So the numbers are jumping around quite a bit here, but it is within a range of roughly 18 to, to 23 amps. So that's what we're getting currently out of the solar panels, which is probably about what we can get for a max on a sunny day like today. So looking at the Victron shunt, batteries were fully charged when we started here, and we're drawing something just under 3 amps out of the batteries themselves. So that's probably about right. It, I guess it takes somewhere like 22, 25 amps to run that refrigerator on purely DC. So that's kind of cool. On a sunny day like today with batteries fully charged, I would be able to run this refrigerator on DC for several hours without fully depleting the, uh, the batteries themselves. And uh, maybe if I stopped early enough in the day, uh, put the refrigerator back on propane, then I'd be able to top up the batteries again for the night. So... Theoretically, I suppose I could save a little bit of propane money on that. So there you go. That completes the solar panel install on this camper up here. I feel really good that I was able to maximize the space I have available. The performance is awesome. And the install went well. Things are really secured. Didn't have to drill any holes in the camper for this. And uh, just, again, feel really good about how this came out and the, the benefit that it provides. I'm looking forward to uh, doing some more electrical upgrades on this, so in the future look for some new batteries, some different charging controllers, DC to DC and solar, and uh, of course upgrading all the wiring and everything that will go along with that. Take care, thanks for watching, and uh, I really hope that we can see you out there soon. Take care everybody.